I'm 20 years old, and I'm addicted to drinking gasoline. Eating bugs. Rescuing food from dumpsters. Eating things. People have some strange addictions, and they actually made a show about it. And while you may be tempted to laugh, hear me out at my points first before going to judge. Be woke. My name is Nathaniel, I'm 27 years old. And I'm in a serious relationship with my car. Interesting. Morning, baby. It's a pretty car, I'm not gonna lie. I'm digging the color. It was love at first sight. His body and then his interior and everything just together just seemed to fit. And I just felt an instant connection. You know, this objectophilia seems like it runs in a similar pattern as animism, where someone believes that an uh, inanimate object has a spirit that uh, is living on, and that's why they fall in love with it. Nathaniel's relationship with Chase goes beyond dates and presents. We have our times when we get sexual. Does that feel good? There has been some research that has showed a sexual gratification or objectification of an added object does sometimes run in a similar course also with autism. So I don't know if uh, autism was in fact diagnosed in this case. I'm 19 years old and I'm addicted to eating sand. Sand, okay. I just love the crunch. That's not good for the teeth. There's a condition known as pica, where individuals actually crave foods like sand, soil, paint, even metal objects, and there are treatments for it. Bria is so dependent on that satisfying crunch, she turns to nail files when her sand supply runs low. It has like sandpaper on it, that gives me the same crunch. So I put it like in the back of my teeth and just go like this. Essentially, you're sanding down your teeth. When you grind them down with that uh, very abrasive surface of the sandpaper, you're actually doing serious damage to it. I wouldn't be surprised if she's gonna need dentures or like implants very early on in her life unless uh, this gets addressed. I'm 20 years old and I'm addicted to drinking gasoline. Gasoline is toxic. And I'm not just saying drinking it, inhaling it, getting it on your skin. In fact, individuals who work surrounding gasoline vapor have higher rates of certain illnesses. Animal studies have showed like kidney, liver disease from ex extended exposure to gasoline vapors. I can't go a day without it. Like I crave it, I need it. I'll wake up, go to the washroom, and drink the gas. This is super dangerous because of a compound called hydrocarbons found within gasoline, which actually act as essential nervous system depressant. You can almost feel like you're drunk off of it, but the danger that it causes to your GI tract, your vital organs, outweigh any potential benefit of consuming it. Stanley might be 31 years old, but for the past 18 years, he has gone to remarkable lengths to remain young at heart very young. Okay, I understand if you're watching at home and you're quick to judge this gentleman and say, wow, this is clearly a disorder. Wait, the way we decide in medicine, in healthcare, whether or not something is a disorder is based on the patient's own life. If the patient is not having an issue, maintaining a job, maintaining healthy social connections, maintaining a relationship. If all these major developmental aspects of life are normal, this is not a disorder. We have to be very careful with our definitions here. And he doesn't just talk the baby talk. He dedicates eight hours a day role-playing as a toddler. That's an important fact to hear because if you have to dedicate eight hours of the day to do this, can you maintain a job? Can you maintain social connections? It's a feeling of being safe something I didn't have when I was growing up. And being an adult baby became my way of coping with the world and my own problems. Humans are great at finding unique coping mechanisms. This works for him, something else may work for you. Just we have to make the decision together with a patient and a doctor whether or not that coping mechanism is A, appropriate for who you are, and B, whether or not it is distracting or detracting from your everyday life. Stanley has even tried baby formula, but like every other toddler, he can be extremely selective. I mean, baby food like that is basically just like mashed up fruits, so it's not like the end of the world eating that, but like baby formula, breast milk, all that really high fat content, you really have to be careful. I don't have any broken bones, but I'm addicted to putting orthopedic casts on my body. <laughs> what? I'm perfectly fine, perfectly healthy. I like the feeling of the cast around me. Just wear a compression sleeve. I've done like two full arm casts. 
two full leg casts. I've done two full leg casts and an arm cast. I've put on so many different casts, it's ridiculous. He just wants to be cuddled, I get it. I need that too sometimes. I just don't go all the way to getting a cast done, but like sometimes I do that with the blanket and then I lay on top of it so I feel like I can't get out. It's like being swaddled. I was 12 years old, I broke my arm rollerblading and I got my first cast. I got a lot of attention with a cast on. And uh, it's just kind of been an ongoing process ever since then. That is a medical diagnosis, actually. People who feign illness in order to get attention or sympathy, that needs to be obviously diagnosed and addressed if that's the case. My name is Dave Gracer, and I'm obsessed with eating bugs. Initial impression of mine is this might not be so bad because bugs are actually kind of nutritious. He has eaten more than 5,000 bugs over the past 11 years. Does he keep track of the numbers of bugs? That's interesting. When it comes to getting bugs, you gotta kill them, and there's a variety of ways of doing that. I prefer freezing them, because you go to sleep. So I think it's the most humane way. You don't just go to sleep. You're viciously cold and then you go to sleep. It's not like he's giving them a paralytic agent to knock them out and then freezing them. David's interest in eating insects just kept getting bigger. Grasshopper, grasshopper, grasshopper. And bigger. Fly pupa, cicada. And bigger. Scorpion tastes kind of like this weird plastic. And you enjoy eating weird plastic? Like, I want to know his explanation. I have follow-up questions. I started going into the woods and getting my own bugs. And I think the first ones I found was a whole log full of carpenter ants. And I tried those. Ants are very rich in protein. Ants, grasshoppers, like grasshoppers almost have the same amount of protein per 100 grams as red meat does. When he wants something more exotic, he goes to his personal supermarket, the pet store. Today, he is picking up a specially ordered bug he has never encountered. That, that is a monster. I will eat a monster. You wanna make sure that you're thinking about toxins that the bug has inside of them, the bacteria that's on the bugs. You also wanna think about anti-nutrients that are actually meant to discourage predators from eating them by not allowing us to withdraw the protein from the foods. And it actually stops the protein absorption inside our bodies. The Vietnamese centipede is the only species of centipede to have ever killed a human being. Wow. Yeah, right in the oil. I'll season them again just real quick with salt and pepper. How does he know to season it with salt and pepper? How does he know those flavors go together if he's never eaten it before? That's just like throwing salt on an already potentially salty food and be like, mm. The heat not only cooks the insect, it also breaks down the poisonous venom. There you go, take a peek and see what we've done today for you, Dave. Oh my God! It's still got the very much the look of the beast. The look of the beast. But there's so much muscle tissue. I feel like I was about to throw up. I understand why you say that. This concept isn't that out there for me because by eating more insects, we can place less strain on our land, have highly, highly nutritious and protein-rich foods brought to our diet, especially in areas where we don't have farming abilities. I've actually tasted grasshopper before. Not too shabby. We're the strongest family in the world. Nick, Callie, Dylan, and Jessica Best you can do it. train their bodies up to 240 hours each week. That's a lot of hours of training. While some pediatricians warn against weight training for kids, 11-year-old Dylan routinely deadlifts 130 pounds. I do like working out. It's like my coffee in the morning. If I don't do it, I don't feel right. <laughs> I love that this kid is so mature. Um, initially looking at this, 11 years old, is probably on the earlier side of starting to lift heavy weights. The idea is that you risk injury when you have non-fully formed muscles, tendons, ligaments, bones, and start lifting heavy weights. It can be done safely, you just need to be very careful and monitored by a professional. Kids like below the age of seven shouldn't be doing weightlifting at all. Starting at age seven, you could start incorporating strength training, that's good, but just not with heavy weights. Oh my gosh, JJ. Experts recommend children her age train with one pound weights. Whoa! But she can lift 100 pounds. That's probably not ideal. That being said, I doubt that this is gonna do any real damage to her growth plates. That was kind of a, a myth that we had published by the American Academy of Pediatrics in 1983, where we thought that could happen. It was a potential risk. And then as time went on, we saw that happen less and less, especially with proper training. Dylan and Jessica consume nearly twice the recommended calories for their age. While we do give recommendations on caloric intake, that is a wide ranging recommendation it needs to be individualized. So for children that are highly active like them, and we see how their weight and their BMI is trending, we can make different changes to their diets and to their recommendations. 
So the fact that they're eating a lot more than an average child isn't that wild to me because they're burning a lot of calories by doing all these workouts several times a day. Hi, I'm Kelly Athena, and I'm obsessed with rescuing food from dumpsters. I, I'm with it. We waste so much food in this country while other countries starve. I don't think this is a terrible idea. I just hope they're doing it safely. The average American household spends over $500 a month on groceries. And we oftentimes spend money on groceries that look the prettiest and waste the food that may not look pretty, but is just as nutritious, just as tasty. Everything I have in my fridge, I got from the dumpster. Apples. Cucumbers, pickles, condiments, grapes, cantaloupe. Here's some soy milk I had, and it, it even expired more than a month ago. Sometimes it's a full-on expiration date, but you really need to understand what that date is for, because that date could be like for ideal freshness or for ideal taste. It still might be calorically, nutritionally valuable. I'm not afraid to eat right out of the dumpster if it's, if it's good stuff. There is this peach. If I peel it, that'll be pretty safe to eat. If I eat out at a restaurant, I don't know who's preparing that food back there. I don't know if I'm a fan of that logic. You don't know who's preparing the food, at least it's cooked. Here, you're getting food that's been living in a dumpster. What if a raccoon pooped on it? B is spicing up the four-month-old dumpster pizza with cheese two weeks past its expiration date. Overripe tomatoes Kelly found a week ago. Maybe a little diced fennel. Fennel found at the bottom of a trash bin just this morning. Oh, well, it's a fresh dumpster fennel, and frozen chicken. Chicken, if it was even not frozen for a short period of time, bacteria can start proliferating on it, especially if it wasn't stored or prepared properly. Oh man, I've had a personal close friend of mine who eats thoroughly cooked foods, eat out at a restaurant, get an infection from one of those foods, and then develop an abscess, which is a pocket of an infection inside his brain, and he still has neurologic effects as a result of that. So. This isn't like totally benign. I also reviewed Family by the Ton, living life as an 800 pound person. Click here to check that out. As always, stay happy and healthy.